All right, so it's fantasy football draft season, so we have the best guys for the job on here with us today, the fantasy footballers, Andy, Jason, Mike. Thank you all so much for being here with us. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, fantasy football go time. Yeah. And I'm going to need all the help I can get from you all for my fantasy football team. <laughs> but before we dive into draft season strategy talk, you are all here with us on behalf of Spotify. So, Jason, what should fantasy football fans know about that? Well, they should know that we're on every single day. So if they need help throughout the season, either leading up to the draft or waivers, whatever, we don't go away ever. We are year-round, always available on Spotify, and we've got a live show on Spotify that they can participate in every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. All right, so let's start with Andy. All right, Andy, there doesn't appear to be a lot of consensus this year, but what does your top three picks look like on your board? And then the other two of you will either agree or rebuttal. So what do your top three picks look like on your board? Yeah, this is probably the uh, most popular fantasy football question. What does the top of the board look like? I think it's... I think for me, it's really all three running backs, and I, I already I got an idea these guys might disagree, but I think it's Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, and then I'm going to lock Derrick Henry in as number three. I think Derrick Henry is that player that people are worried about, excited about. He was on fire last year, had the foot injury, but I think you know it's looking like the odds of that re-injury is down in the 5% range, and I'll take a 95% chance of what we got in Derrick Henry. I'm going to disagree. Uh, look, okay. I, I love all those players. They're great. Uh, but I think Christian McCaffrey should be the 101. Every running back deals with injury, and if you take injury out, he is the best fantasy football asset. Jonathan Taylor, last year's number one, mm -hmm. would be my number two. And then I'm putting Cooper Cup as my third player overall. I think he will repeat as the wide receiver one this season. And I'm going to disagree with, <laughs> with both of them. Uh, oh, okay. I, I'm going with Christian McCaffrey at the top, so I agree with uh, Jason there, and then Jonathan Taylor. But I have Justin Jefferson from the Minnesota Vikings uh, this year over Cooper Cup, heading into his third year. Already uh, in two years, two short years, uh, we already have seen a Hall of Fame type of trajectory for him. You know, just absolutely smashing all the records when it comes to a wide receiver, and now in a more pass-friendly offense with Kirk Cousins and the mm -hmm. the new offensive regime. Now that that uh, Coach Zimmer is out for them. I think that Justin Jefferson is going to smash this year for fantasy. All right, Mike, who is your favorite sleeper in the late rounds that has the potential to win you a championship? Sure, I'll go with, I'll go with Alan Lazard, uh, Green Bay Packers wide receiver, current Green Bay Packers wide receiver one. Like Aaron Rodgers is tremendous. He's one of the best NFL quarterbacks we have ever seen, and he is – uh, especially good at throwing touchdowns, which is fantastic for fantasy football purposes. And now with Devontae Adams gone, Lazard is the number one wide receiver. Aaron Rodgers has talked about him frequently through the offseason, saying we're, we're very uh, excited to see what Allen can do as the number one guy. And so double-digit touchdowns is in the range of outcomes for him, and he's going in those later rounds and could easily find himself as a top 20 wide receiver at the end of the year. All right, Jason, do you agree or do you disagree with that? <laughs> I, I, I agree a little bit. I, I think he'll be valuable, but I don't think he will ever become the one. Uh, he's not going to replace Devontae Adams. He's not good enough. He's kind of a tight end living in a wide receiver's body. The late sleeper that I would uh, go all in on is James Cook, the rookie running back for the Buffalo Bills. They went out and tried to sign Chase Edmonds. They couldn't get him. They then went out and tried to sign Jarek McKinnon. They couldn't get him. So they spent a second-round pick on Dalvin Cook's brother. This is a, one of the best offenses in the league, and rookie running backs have a great success rate in fantasy football. So I think by the end of this year, we're all going to look back and be like, why didn't we draft James Cook really high? Uh, I, I agree with these guys. Both of those are good names. I'll throw Damian Pierce, rookie running back for the yeah. Houston Texans, in there as well. Trying to find running backs late in your draft. You know, James Cook is an example of one you might be able to pick up late, but Damian Pierce looking good in preseason and the competition in Houston, there is none. So I think he's a he's a great sleeper. Andy, sticking with you, who is your favorite boomer bus candidates? Yeah, I think that there's uh there's a number of names that I that make sense to me as potential booms or bounce backs in the middle rounds. I think Allen Robinson for the Los Angeles Rams is a name that I'm really paying attention to. Matthew Stafford, Sean McVay, 
Super Bowl championship team, and yet people are just hurt. They're emotionally hurt by Allen Robinson last year. Uh, he was never on the same page with Justin Fields in Chicago. It was kind of a lost season. And so in fantasy, we're looking for players that maybe we can pick up when other people are staying away from them due to uh, the burns that they suffered. So I think Allen Robinson is a, a boom player that you can pick up in the middle of the draft. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. There's another wide receiver who's a boom player that – has burned people in the past. It's Cortland Sutton. Uh, Cortland Sutton looked like he was going to be a thing a couple of years ago. He's a big bodied, talented wide receiver, but he has pretty much stunk for fantasy football uh, in the last couple of years. Well, now you get Russell Wilson. And if you're Russell Wilson's number one wide receiver, you've been a top 12 wide receiver literally every single year of Russell Wilson's career. And I would jump in and I want to say uh, Darnell Mooney, wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. The Bears are... <laughs> They're not really a team that the NFL community is hopeful about right now, unfortunately. <laughs> I, we have what looks like could be a franchise quarterback with Justin Fields, yeah. but they simply have not addressed the offensive side of the football to help support Justin Fields. But Darnell Mooney, is he is still there, and he had a breakout campaign last year as a sophomore, over 1,000 yards, only four receiving touchdowns. But he is that dude for the Chicago Bears, and – I mean, we, we've already seen him again in the preseason flashing with a huge uh, diving reception, and, and he's going to be the go-to guy for Justin Fields, not only because of his talent, but just there's no, there's no other proven players on that team. And I think that people have just the, – the, the stink of the Chicago Bears <laughs> is like the, the wafting the and, and, and preventing people from – There's an odor. Into there's Darnell an odor, Wood. and it's a problem. Yeah, yeah the Bears it's poop in the woods. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> aptly named team. <laughs> Jason, I uh, I want to ask you this question uh, in particular. So who do you think has the biggest question mark heading into the draft? Would you say it's Barkley? Because I know that's a major one that a lot of people were feeling. But who, to you, has the biggest question mark heading into this? It's Cam Akers. Cam Akers yeah. is of coming off of an injury, the Achilles injury, that he came back from already in record time. But we don't have an example of a running back coming back to fantasy relevance after this injury, literally ever. Um, they have come back to the NFL and after a couple of years been involved, but never been a fantasy relevant player ever. But he was very young when he got the injury. He's part of the Super Bowl champion Rams where they used him down the stretch in the playoffs, even when he was inefficient. So I'm just so curious can he come back from that specific injury at that specific position? Because if he is the dude for the Rams, this is a player we all loved coming out of the, you know, out of college into the NFL draft. He could be great. I find myself though betting against him more often than not. Well, it sounded like y'all agreed on that Cam one though. Would you do you guys agree on that one, you'd say? Yeah, I mean he he's tough. I mean, you mentioned Barkley. He's he's a question mark too. People want to know what you're getting are you getting the old Saquon Barkley is it is this more of a volume play in New York Javante Williams out of Denver a huge question mark uh, a young 22 year old running back uh you know when you have am ambiguity at an important position like running back mm -hmm. you know you have to make a decision to jump in or stay away and if you make the wrong decision you end up living with that throughout the season Mike what is the best round to start thinking about drafting a quarterback this year Mm. Ooh. Uh, so we've always on this show tried to explain to people, like, educate people on how just fantasy football truly works. That yeah. when you only start one quarterback, if there's only 12 people in your team, it's a devalued position because there's just guys sitting on the waiver wire on no one's roster that in any given week, if they're in a strong matchup, you can just pick them up and play them and still get a decent output of uh, fantasy points. So it, it's not so much about round. Like, we talk about uh, the tiers of – so, like, think of your fantasy football players in a bucket, right? So you've got these guys that they're going to score around the same amount of points, and it's just when wh – what type of tier do you want your quarterback to be in? Do you want him in an elite tier? Well, it's pretty much just Josh Allen by himself. But after that, then you got Justin Herbert, yeah. uh, Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray, these guys – but. They're going to sort of score similar points. So our recommendation is when that bucket starts to empty out, grab the player at the 
at, at the bottom of that tier because then you can still extract value from your draft at the running back and the wide receiver position, of which you need many and not just one. Yeah. And Andy, I want to kind of ask you the same sort of question, but when should you start thinking about drafting a tight end on the other hand? Yeah, I mean, just like just like a quarterback, you only start one of them on your fantasy team unless you're in a really strange league with different scoring settings. So yeah. whenever you have a position like that, you're always going to sacrifice something taking one very early. I mean, there are elite players like Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews that are going to make a huge difference on your team. It's just going to be something you have to make up for later. You're going to have to hit on a Cam Akers later in your draft or a J.K. Dobbins or a James Cook because you chose to go early with a tight end. Uh, more often than not, when we're mock drafting, we just don't seem to make that leap and go in and spend a high draft pick on a Mark Andrews or a, a George Kittle or somebody of that uh, caliber because the cost is just so high. So it's very similar to the, the quarterback strategy that we employ. If one of those superstars is dropping, maybe we're tempted to take them. But more often than not, there's some other eager manager that wants to jump in Claim that big name, and I'm going to take advantage of the other positions. Yeah, and the only thing I would add to that is don't get the middle tight ends. The middle tight ends are pretty much worthless. Once those two top guys are gone, if you spend a third, fourth, fifth round pick where there's great running backs and wide receivers, you're not getting an elite tight end. You're still going to have problems at your tight end position. Just wait till the end of the draft and get someone that you know that that is so similar to those middle tier running uh, tight ends all right guys now for the last game and this is the lightning round where we're going to play a thumbs up thumbs down so i'm going to give you guys a statement count to three and then you all give me a thumbs up all right. or thumbs down <laughs> i think we all can right. do it will cooper cup be wide receiver one again three two one no uh, we got two -thirds. it okay <laughs> two thirds two thirds yep <laughs> Okay, so why do you have thumbs down for that one? I'm curious. I, uh, like I said at the top, I just I have Justin Jefferson coming in okay. and, and taking over that spot with more volume. And, I mean, it, it may sound silly, but it's just – guy like Cooper Cup had a historical outlier of a season. And he's incredible. He's a, he's a great wide receiver in the right position with a very competent quarterback in Matthew Stafford. But for guys to, to repeat those types of numbers – year after year after year, and be the number one overall year after year after year. It just we, – we don't historically see that happen. All right, second statement. The Eagles' skilled players are a safer bet fantasy-wise than the Dolphins' skilled players. It's <laughs> Three, a good one. Oh, yeah, man. two, one. Oh, oh look at us. Hey. Unanimous. Unanimous. To, to be clear, they're both risky, <laughs> <laughs> but I think the Eagles are a little safer. You know a little bit more of yeah. what they have fantasy-wise at the quarterback position. Like Jalen Hurts has done it. Tua has yeah. not taken that step. And uh, we know A.J. Brown is a commodity that, you know, on the fantasy – in fantasy circles, you know what he's going to do when he has the opportunity. Fair enough. Okay, next statement. Mahomes will still be an elite fantasy quarterback without Hill this season. Three, two, one, go. Oh, no. we got two up, one down. That okay. one might have to do with what do you mean by elite? Yeah, right. that, that's all it is for me. It elite okay. is you are a true difference maker at the, at the quarterback position. And we – you see maybe one or two of those guys where they just kind of lap the field and mm -hmm. they are actually multiple points better per game. So I think that Mahomes will still be good. good. He's, like He'll still be great for fantasy football, but not. I don't have him in the elite category this year. Okay, I like that caveat. All right, next statement. Joe Burrow will have a better fantasy year than Justin Herbert. Three, two, one, <laughs> go. Oh. All right. All right. Now we're getting softball. Yeah. yeah, we need some yeah. one of y'all to explain your, your thoughts uh, down. Joe, Joe Burrow <laughs> has such a great opportunity. He is so good. His weapons are fantastic. But when you look yeah. at the offensive systems that these two quarterbacks find themselves in, it's not a fair fight. You have Justin Herbert throwing for 150 more passing attempts than Joe Burrow does. The, the difference in offensive philosophy – uh, for the Chargers, it's throw, throw, throw the ball, go for it on fourth down, keep going no matter what, outscore your opponents. We play in a division with, you know, it's all about offense. 
Whereas for the Bengals, their defense is is very good. Their running game with Joe Mixon is fantastic. They don't have the pass catching back like Austin Eckler, and mm-hmm. they're going to win more games of attrition than games of outscoring you. So in the end, this year, Justin Herbert will definitely, if if both players play a full season, Herbert will outscore Burrow for sure. Ooh, all right. This is another good one. Okay, AJ Dillon is the best running back handcuff in the league. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. unanimous. <laughs> he's even he's more than that though. Yeah. He really is. He's a player I think yeah. Green Bay will get involved on the field, uh, even with Aaron Jones. So he's kind of like uh, an insurance plus type of running back <laughs> with a lot of upside. Okay. All right, we got a few more for you guys. I hope you guys are All enjoying right. these. All right. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey got stuttered there. Will burn fantasy managers for the third season in a row. I personally feel this one. So, mm-hmm. all right, three, two, one, go. Yeah, we're oh, all thumbs down okay. on this one. We, we come have, on, Christian, but but he might. Yeah, it, it will feel really, really bad uh, if you draft him and he gets injured again. You know, we've yeah. we've got um, you know a lot of injury analysts in the industry that look at what are repeatable injuries how do you consider someone injury prone or not and the specific types of injuries that certain guys have which fits Christian mm-hmm. McCaffrey aren't really the ones that you worry about going forward you know it was it was not that long ago that Keenan Allen was thought of as just this giant injury risk guy couldn't stay healthy lacerated kidney a shoulder problem a leg pro- you know everything broke down on his body and now he he doesn't miss games. Football is a brutal sport. I'm going to go with the player who is phenomenal on the field, who's paid a lot of money and is the center of the offense. I don't think he's going to let you down this year. He might miss Please a couple don't. games. Please don't let us down. He might miss <laughs> a couple games, but him. most running backs do. I like that. All right, next one. Brees Hall will be the highest scoring rookie in fantasy. Three. Wow. Yeah. Two, one, go. No chance. Oh, oh we're even. He, we're even. We it looks like we've got thumbs two up. thumbs up, two, <laughs> two thumbs down. Thumbs down. <laughs> All right, I'll ask you then with the two thumbs up because you gotta, you gotta explain yourself. Those were, that was two of them. Yeah, I uh, I absolutely love the talent of Brees Hall. I think that he his opportunity is fantastic. You're talking about the only player really in his way is Michael Carter, a player that fantasy the fantasy community loves. He was very, very efficient last year for what he was, but what he was was a fourth-round draft pick. Brees Hall was the 18th player on their board that they tried to trade up into the first round to get, and they did trade up in the second round when he fell there and they got him his explosiveness his college mm-hmm. production profile i think he's going to be the best rookie fantasy asset far and away there we go Claiming yeah i mean it. i think the odds are against him i think Brees hall may end up the best rookie running back but i think the odds are against him to be the most productive and impactful fantasy football player on the uh rookie fantasy starter on the year i think there's some wide receivers that are going to make an impact and, and I mentioned Damian Pierce. There's a chance he has more opportunity than Brees Hall does. I do think the odds are with him being the fantasy running back, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little wishy-washy. They already don't know who their quarterback is. All right, last one for y'all. This has been fun, and I appreciate your guys' honesty on all these. So, <laughs> Michael Thomas will have a better bounce-back season than Saquon Barkley. Three. That's a good question. Thank you. Three, two, one, go. Oh wow! Ooh, oh, well, I did not expect three thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, explain this is... yourselves. <laughs> I think I think Saquon. It, you're you're talking about something that Saquon's volume I think is guaranteed. Yeah. Michael Thomas's volume is something that we are questioning. We don't know how much work he'll get, and he's never been a player that's been a down the field threat. He's been a close to the line of scrimmage, passing volume from Drew Brees. So. I think it's more question marks like floating above our heads about Michael Thomas because without that volume, he may disappoint fantasy players who want him to be back at that number one, number two level. And I don't know if that's in his range of outcomes where Saquon's going to get 300 touches. We just hope he's still good. Yeah, if they're both bad, I mean, wide receivers have to earn their touches. <laughs> they have to get open. Running backs don't. You can be inefficient and still good for fantasy. Look at Najee Harris last year behind a bad offensive line. Very inefficient. But when you touch the ball 300 times, you're a great fantasy asset. If you're bad at wide receiver, you don't get thrown the ball. Look at us agreeing. 
I love it. <laughs> but thank you guys uh, all for joining the show this week with us. And remember, you can now listen to the Fantasy Footballers podcast on Spotify this season. Up next, it's Madden Release Week, and we have the Madden rating guy, Dustin Smith, join the show for us. Hey, sports fans, if you want to watch more sports seriously, be sure to check out these clips right here. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see all the great content from us here at USA Today Sports.